WWE might be scripted, Ooh. but if you think wrestlers don't get seriously hurt, well, keep watching. I don't see While anybody. ready for a shot at the Raw Women's Championship, Rhea Ripley wanted to prove she was worthy of being a champion. What better way to do that than by taking on Nia Jax live on Raw? The two had a good match, but at one point, Ripley accidentally cut Jax near her eye. As the fight continued, Ouch. the cut became worse and worse until almost half of Nia Jax's face was covered in blood. Luckily, the irresistible force was able to finish oh the match. Oh my god. However, she ended up losing when Rhea Ripley rolled her up for the three count. The SmackDown Women's she Championship kept her composure. Match at WrestleMania 37 was phenomenal. Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair destroyed each other and would do anything to win. However, when the boss tried to mess with Belair's hair, that was going too far. Whoa. Oh my god! Oh, I heard that. Pleasant sound. Immediately, Banks had a mark where Bianca Belair's hair went through. Luckily, the match was over shortly after that. This next injury yeah. wasn't caused by a move at all. In early 2021, the Hurt Business was having some issues Dude looks with like the Ray Lewis. Party. This led to a series of matches against the two teams. One of them was a three-on-three -three tag team match with Matt Riddle teaming up with Lindsay Dorado and Grand Metalik. <laughs> While the match started competitive, MVP Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin eventually got things under control and isolated Grand Metalik from his tag team partners. One mistake was all it took though, and the Luchadors were able to tag in Matt Riddle. Why is this guy not wearing any shoes though? That's what I want to know. Things went from bad to worse. When MVP came running into the ring, his right knee suddenly blew out. Oh. It was clear that something was wrong, as MVP had to hop around oh, for the rest of the match. To throw salt into the wound, the Hurt Business ended up losing the match. Luckily, MVP continued to appear on TV, even though he couldn't wrestle. He turned to a pimp. This must have been when the uh, pandemic was going on. At WrestleMania 37, Sheamus won the United States Championship. One of the Celtic Warrior's first challengers was Humberto Carrillo, and the two would compete in several matches. One of them had a painful ending, however. Humberto and Sheamus were wrestling like normal when Carrillo went to perform a sunset flip on Sheamus. Unfortunately, oh. Sheamus' entire body fell directly on Humberto's left leg. Oh. Luckily, the injury wasn't too serious, and Humberto Carrillo was able to wrestle again soon. Okay. Unfortunately, another injury would occur. A few weeks after Humberto's injury, Sheamus was wrestling Ricochet. Thanks to some help from Carrillo, Ricochet was able to pin the US Champion. This set up a second match between Sheamus and Humberto Carrillo, and this is where things went very wrong. The Luchador punched the Celtic Warrior in the face, but accidentally hit Sheamus on the nose. Oh! Within seconds, Sheamus was bleeding. It only got worse as the match continued, and Sheamus began to look like a monster in a slasher movie. On top of that, Sheamus also lost the match. Following the injury, oh. Sheamus had to undergo surgery and wore a protective mask while his nose healed. Dang. After losing the women's tag team championship. I mean, I guess injuries do happen in a sport. I guess sometimes it feels like, you know, it is all fake, but, you know, mistakes always happen, though. At the Royal Rumble, Asuka and Charlotte Flair got a chance to avenge their loss a few weeks later. The Queen and the Empress teamed up to take on the women who had taken their titles, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. After fighting for a while, the Empress of Tomorrow got an eye on the mat and locked in the armbar. The Queen of Spades came to her tag team partner's rescue and kicked Asuka in the face. Baszler accidentally hit a bit too hard, and one of Asuka's teeth went flying Oh down. no! Of course, this wasn't planned. Because of it, the Empress of Tomorrow had to take a short amount of time off to recover. Before Dang. Daniel Bryan was released from WWE, he had a series of great matches with Cesaro. The two gave it their all, but things did go wrong. During one of their matches on SmackDown, Daniel Bryan hit Cesaro with a huge missile drop kick shortly after the match started. Somehow, the move created a cut on the side of Cesaro's head. Mm. At first, it didn't seem too bad, but it quickly got worse and worse. By the end of the match, the cut was looking pretty nasty. Jesus. Despite the loss of blood, the Swiss Superman managed to win the match. He looks like Jason Statham a little bit, but I'm thinking what happened is when he went to go kick him, he cut like a vein on his head and that's what caused the blood to come out. On NXT, Roderick Strong issued an open challenge. Perhaps to Strong's surprise, he got an answer from Russia. Ilya Dragunov took Roderick Strong up on his offer, and the what two What a cool last it. name. Dragunov took Dragunov. Strong to his version of Suplex City, but Ilya accidentally did some damage to himself. 
Roderick Strong fell on Ilya Dragunov's head, oh. which caused the Russian wrestler to start bleeding between the eyes. Almost knocked it himself only got out. As the match went on, but the pain was worth it as Ilya Dragunov won the match. Damn. The cut was so bad, however, that Dragunov needed stitches afterward. Ugh. Be prepared to cringe in three, two. What is that move called? Like a suplex? You have to really know what you're doing because I feel like that's happened so many times and not only WWE, but in MMA. I've seen people knock themselves out doing that. During a six woman tag team match on Raw, Becky Lynch started messing with her opponent, Bianca Belair. Bro, is she still As whipping people saw, with her hair? It didn't work out well for Becky. Moments after the hair whip, a huge red mark formed on Lynch's stomach. It didn't put Becky Lynch out of action, uh. but that had to hurt. The next time Becky and Bianca would face off in the ring was at WrestleMania 38. Unfortunately, someone suffered a nasty injury during this match too. Ooh. At one point, it looked like Becky was trying to perform a vertical senton. Something was off, and the only thing that connected was Becky Lynch's boot with Bianca Belair's face. Ooh. Despite the painful accident, Belair continued the match and ended up winning the Raw Women's Championship. It looked like Bianca was fine, but the next night on Raw, we saw just how extensive Belair's injury was. Oh, wow. Her left eye looked terrible, but despite that, she took Bianca it like Belair a champ, was though. still in good spirits. Hopefully, this took doesn't mean like that 2022 is cursed, but the very first WWE match of the year had someone getting injured. Cesaro and Ricochet were facing off against Sheamus and Ridge Holland during the day one kickoff show. Only about a minute into the match, and Cesaro flipped Ricochet onto Ridge Holland. Ooh. Unfortunately, Ricochet's boot landed on, his on face. Holland's face. Yeah. Ridge soon tagged out and wasn't seen for the rest of the match. Dang. We learned later that the botched move broke Ridge Holland's nose. Oh. Thankfully, it wasn't too serious, and Ridge Holland was wrestling again soon. Okay. But in a scary coincidence, Ridge would later botch a move that could have ended someone's career. While teaming oh, with word. Sheamus, Ridge Holland was in a match with Kobe Kingston and Big E. Holland and Big E were fighting on the outside, leading to Ridge hitting E with an overhead belly to belly. Oh! Didn't get high enough, causing oh! a oh! It was incredibly. Oh my god! Oh, dude, he landed right on his neck, man scary to see and the oh caused big e to break his neck oh he, he broke his head. neck he broke his neck oh my god yeah that looked like it was kind of weird when he did that move though because he didn't get him high enough and he oh my gosh it was thankfully discovered that biggie's spinal cord wasn't injured and he would not need surgery thankfully however as of right now he has not wrestled since that match i don't Drew blame McIntyre him began 2022 by feuding with happy corbin and madcap moss their rivalry went on for a few months and included a match at elimination chamber at the event mcintyre took on moss oh. in a falls count anywhere match even though they could fight anywhere, the most painful moment of the match actually happened in the ring. The match had only been going on for a few minutes when Drew McIntyre planned Madcap Moss with an Alabama slam. Oh. Something went wrong because Madcap landed head first. Oh the my the god! The part is that Madcap Moss walked it off and continued the match like the whole thing didn't happen. Oh. In his WrestleMania debut, Rick Boogs had the huge honor of being part of the opening match. Jesus. Boogs teamed up with Shinsuke Nakamura to challenge the SmackDown take team champions, the Usos. Shinsuke started the match, but after a bit of fighting, taked out with Rick Boogs. Rick was running wild, but his rampage came to an abrupt stop when his knee suddenly gave out when he lifted both Usos. Oh! Boogs quickly taked out with Nakamura. It turned out that Boogs tore his quadricep and hasn't been in action since the injury. Wow. February 2022. That is horrible. Oh my goodness, man. Um... That probably isn't as bad as breaking your neck, but that still looked really painful. Oh my gosh. Randy Orton and Matt Riddle found themselves in a tag team match against the Street Profits on Raw. The match was going smoothly until the finish. Montez Ford performed his signature frog splash on Orton, but Ford's position was off and he landed <sighs> on Randy's shoulder. Yeah. The Viper was clearly in pain after the botched move, but thankfully it wasn't anything serious. Damn. On SmackDown, Natalya took on Shayna Baszler in a one-on-one -on -one match, but Ronda Rousey was in Baszler's corner. Baszler didn't need any help though, as she's able to beat her opponent on 
on her own. After the match though, Rousey told Shayna the job wasn't finished yet, leading to the Queen of Spades nailing Natalia with a knee to the face. The move actually did connect though, and oh. Natalia's nose was broken oh. and bleeding. Oh. Unfortunately, the accident actually dislocated Natalia's nose and it required her to undergo surgery. Dang. SummerSlam 2022 kicked off with Becky Lynch challenging Bianca Belair for the Raw Women's Championship, which was a rematch from WrestleMania 38, which was a rematch from the previous year's SummerSlam. Oh. However, only about three minutes into it, Becky fell on her right shoulder. The landing caused Lynch's shoulder to pop out of its socket. Oh! Clear Becky was in pain. Oh! She kept checking on it throughout the match. The injury became more and more visible. Oh my god, yo, that's crazy. That is crazy. Her bone is literally out of her shoulder. That is insane. Test, but Lynch didn't let it stop her, and she got the job done. In November 2022, R-Truth wrestled his first match on NXT since 2011, but it turned out to be a bad decision. During the match, Truth performed a somersault to his opponent on the outside. That just Truth looked wrong. the top rope, though, and didn't jump far enough, <laughs> causing him to crash hard onto the floor. Damn. The former 24-7 champion grabbed his left leg, and the referee soon called off the match, and R-Truth was helped backstage. It was ACL later found tour? out that the accent tore Truth's quad, and he needed to undergo surgery. Oh, One of the quad. defining images of Tales in 22 was Cody Rhodes' gruesome torn pectoral muscle. Oh, you tore his pec. Man. Oh, my gosh. These are getting way, like, these are getting increasingly worse as the video goes on. How did he actually get injured? On the Raw before Cody's Hell in a Cell match with Seth Rollins, Rhodes and Rollins got into a brawl. During the fight, Cody tore his right pectoral tendon. Mm. That was bad enough, but a few days later, while weight training, Rhodes tore the tendon completely off the bone. That's why the injury looks so bad when fans <sighs> saw it at Hell in a Cell. Uh. Additionally, the reason WWE allowed Cody Rhodes to wrestle was that he couldn't do any more damage. Nevertheless, the injury sidelined Cody Rhodes for the rest of the year. Wow. This injury was pretty unique. On Raw in June 2022, Alexa Bliss, Liv Morgan, Rhea Ripley, and Dewdrop fought in a fatal four. Oh my gosh. The winner got to face Bianca Belair at Money in the Bank for the Raw Women's Championship. At one point in the match, Morgan gave Bliss a kick to the gut, which caused Alexa to DDT Ripley. Ooh. What actually hurt Rhea, though, was her own knee. Ooh. Ripley's boot got caught on the rope, which caused her face to collide with her leg. Oh, it okay. didn't seem so bad okay. until Rhea Ripley shared a picture of the damage the accident caused oh. to her mouth. On top of that, the injury also gave Ripley a concussion. Thankfully, after about a month on the sidelines, Rhea was back in action. Not all WWE injuries happened on TV. During a triple threat match, dude, so she was back in a month's time. I don't know what like the concussion protocol is when somebody does receive one, but is that the standard like length that you have to be gone before coming back to whatever you're doing? Someone in the comments tell me. Match at a non televised WWE show, Carmella, Asuka, and Bianca Belair all faced off for the Raw Women's title. As the match was starting to come to the end, Carmella tried to pull a fast one on Belair by attacking her from behind. Bianca got out of harm's way with a backflip. That was but dope. Carmella immediately crumbled to the mat and went outside of the ring. It appears their timing was off, and Belair's tailbone smacked Carmella's head. Oh. An image was later shared on social media. Wow. Exactly the damage the botch move did to Mella. Whenever weapons get. And, and that was just just hitting her with her tail like she just ran into her tailbone and that did all that oh my gosh involved it's very easy for a wrestler to get hurt and we witnessed this on smackdown in august 2022 in the lead up to his match against roman reigns at clash of the castle mcintyre took on honore us Sami Zayn. mcintyre won the match but he didn't end the night on a high note roman and the usos came in and attacked the scottish warrior they battered mcintyre with chairs and threw his body all around the ringside area oh. you could already see marks form on drew's body Oh, but gosh. up close pictures taken backstage showed just how much damage the beatdown did. Damn. You know an injury is bad when the match is immediately stopped and the referee throws up the X sign. Unfortunately, that's what happened in the main event oh, of shit. NXT UK in February 2022. Blair Davenport and Mako Satomura fought in a Japanese street fight. Despite the match type, the injury was not caused by any weapon. Davenport jumped from the top turnbuckle and hit Satomura with a stomp to the back. Oh my Blair goodness. Blair landed awkwardly on her left foot and began shooting. Oh. Oh. Within seconds, the referee called for the bell and gave the X sign, signaling that this injury was real. Dude, I thought for two seconds, I thought the way that she was laying outside of the, the mat, I thought it was just like her head. Like, I, I didn't know that it was, bro, 
Oh my goodness. I thought that she landed on her neck or something like that. Blair landed awkwardly on her left foot and began shouting in pain. Within seconds, the referee called for the bell and gave the X sign, oh. signaling that this injury was real. The landing hurt Blair's left ankle, but thankfully, after being out of action for about four months, Blair was able to return to the ring. Four months, Ladder man. matches are some of those brutal matches mm. that everyone puts on each year, and the 2022 Women's Money in the Bank was no exception. One of the participants was Shotzi, who had a rough night. She had okay. a few mistakes Female during the match, but oh, the yeah, I saw this. for a senton. Shotzi performed the move from the top rope, but ended up hitting the ladder below. Oh. It appears her back and or head got clipped by the ladder on the way down. Oh, in yeah. In any case, the move did bust Shotzi open, as evident by the blood on her face. In 2009, Jeff Hardy and Edge faced off in a ladder match with the World Heavyweight Championship on the line. <laughs> it was an awesome fight, but unfortunately, it wasn't without issues. Hardy and Edge had been wrestling for a while and ended up on a ladder that was outside of the ring. Then he was able to continue the match. Say what you will about Jeff Brock Hardy's Lesnar, a beast, man. the guy can hurt you for real. After a long absence from WWE, Lesnar made his in-ring return at the 2012 Extreme Rules. His opponent was John Cena, and in less than 30 seconds, Brock had busted Cena's head Damn. wide open. It was so bad that the match had to be stopped temporarily. Do Yo, those look like some real elbows. Like, was he not understanding that? Oh my goodness, man. He, he looked like he was really trying to knock him out, man. Lesnar was so reckless during the match, yeah. he pretty himself, too. Later on, the Beast dove at John Cena and ended up flipping out of the ring and onto the floor. Brock looked like he hurt his knee, but both wrestlers were able to keep fighting and finish the match. Jeez. This next injury shows how dangerous wrestling can be, even if you aren't involved in the match. The 2011 Extreme Rules was a big moment. After Edge vacated the World Heavyweight Championship, Christian and Alberto Del Rio fought to become the new champion. It looked like Captain Charisma was about to grab the title until Del Rio's bodyguard, his name is Brodus Captain Clay, Charisma, ran in. Christian managed to get the better of Brodus and throw a ladder into his face. Unfortunately, the weapon busted open Brodus Clay's head. Oh, it Luckily, did? Luckily, it wasn't too serious, and Clay was ready to get back to work very soon. It looked like he barely hit him with the ladder, though. Let me rewind that. It looked like he barely tapped him with the ladder. Brodus Clay ran in. Christian managed to get the better of Brodus and throw a ladder into his face. Oh. Unfortunately, the weapon busted open Brodus Clay's head. Damn. Luckily, it wasn't too serious, and Clay was ready to get back to work very soon. Even Dead Man Bleeds. In 2019, The Undertaker made a rare appearance at Extreme Rules, teaming up with Rowan Reigns to take on Shane McMahon and Drew McIntyre. The tag team match was nothing short of chaos, and it only got worse when Elias ran in and smashed a guitar into Undertaker's back. Unfortunately, splinters from the wooden guitar got stuck in Undertaker's skin. Oh, it shit. It was made clear that something went wrong as blood began to pour from the Phenom's back. Oh. Thankfully, it wasn't anything the dead man couldn't handle, and he got the last laugh when he tombstone pile drive Shane McMahon and won the match. The 2004 Royal Rumble was going pretty smoothly until the final 10 minutes. The remaining five wrestlers formed an alliance to try and eliminate the Big Show. They threw everything <laughs> they had, but this only angered the Giant. Show eventually fought back and used his monstrous strength to catapult John Cena this is, over the top rope. This looks really, oh my god! He his knee awkwardly when he landed, and it resulted in him tearing his MCL. MCL? Even yeah. though he had to wear a knee brace for a while and was temporarily limited with what he could do in the ring, oh. Cena continued to compete, even appearing on SmackDown only five days after his injury. I guess that's why he's called Only the five champ. days? The 2008 Royal Rumble was kind of a big deal. It was held in Madison Square Garden, Michael Buffer was the guest announcer, it was the first WWE pay-per-view in HD, and Shawn Michaels and Undertaker were the first two entrants. Everything was fine, until the fourth participant, Hardcore Holly, got into the ring. Michaels was lying on the mat, so Holly decided to assault him with a few stops. Pretty normal wrestling stuff. Ooh. But one of those boots landed straight yeah. on HBK's face. Yeah, right on his After face. After laying low for a short while, the showstopper got back into the action. At first, it didn't look so bad, but that changed pretty quickly as blood began to pour from Shawn Michaels' nose. Even with this, Michaels continued wrestling for roughly half an hour before being eliminated, all with a bloody and probably broken nose. <sighs> it's interesting looking back at CM Punk's Jesus. final days in WWE, now that we have insight into what was going on. When the voice of the voiceless entered the 2014 Royal Rumble, he was upset with things backstage and was also suffering from a staph infection, so before the bell even rung, Punk was not in the best place. This is made even worse when the number 8 entrant, Kofi Kingston, got into the ring. 
In signature fashion, Kofi got started by hitting a close Boom! Line. Yo, and that was a dope move. Rumble, CM Punk later revealed that he actually got a concussion from it. Oh. To make matters worse, Punk wrestled for another 40 minutes before being eliminated and also received a choke slam from Kane through one of the announcer's table. Wait, wait, wait. He said that he got a concussion when that happened? How did he still manage to, like, pull through this whole match, you know? If you got a concussion, I feel like... You just have to at least sit down for a few minutes, you know? You're probably done. I can't speak for the man, but I'm guessing he isn't too fond of this night. While all these injuries were unfortunate, this one may be the saddest. Having made his WWE debut seven months earlier, the 2003 Royal Rumble was going to be Chris Nowinski's first appearance at the event. He entered very early at the number three position and wisely decided to stay on the outside for a while. Eventually, when the moment was right, he slid into the ring and began getting his hands dirty. As the match continued, Rey Mysterio and Edge went to double-team Nowinski and got on opposite turnbuckles to hit dueling missile dropkicks. However, oh, the oh. timing was off and Edge ended up landing on the Harvard graduate's head. Oh, yeah. Instantly, you can tell Chris Nowinski was in pain, and thankfully, he was eliminated not long after. He uh. would still wrestle for a little while after this, but ongoing post-concussion symptoms ultimately led him to retire. Ongoing post-concussion symptoms, that dude could very well have some brain damage. Retire. After his classic rivalry with Brett, Stone Cold began feuding with another member of the Hart family, Owen. After squaring off in tag team matches, Stone Cold. the two finally went one-on-one -on -one at the 1997 SummerSlam. The matchup should have been a classic, oh my but it's gosh. much well known for one moment. After competing for about 15 minutes, Owen performed a pile driver, oh. and it was immediately clear that something was wrong. Pile drivers make me so anxious when I see them perform because you're literally dropping someone on their head. Now, I feel like when The Undertaker does his tombstone, you can see that I think he kind of uses his knees or his, I don't know how he does it, but it doesn't hit the head doesn't hit the canvas but in this case he looked like he landed right on his head the impact caused stone cold to break his neck and suffer oh! paralysis owen hart began taunting the crowd to buy the texas rattlesnake some time temporarily oh my god he was paralyzed temporarily my gosh and after a minute that likely felt like an hour steve austin managed to roll up hart for the win Thankfully, Stone Cold recovered and went to become the legend we know today. Oh my gosh. The 2016 SummerSlam was historic. The Universal Championship A legend is an understatement. And Seth Rollins and Finn Balor got to swear off to see who would become the first man to ever hold the title. The match started off alright, but within the first three minutes, disaster struck. Oof. Seth Rollins pulled Balor to the outside and sent the Demon King flying oh. into the ringside barricade. The impact was so hard that it caused Finn Balor's shoulder to be dislocated. Jeez. But despite the injury, the Irishman continued to wrestle for another 16 minutes. Mm. While Finn did become the inaugural Universal Champion, he unfortunately had to relinquish it the next night in order to undergo shoulder surgery. The Prince returned the following year, but sadly hasn't won a single world title since then. Mm. As part of Mabel's infamous main event push in 1995, the, the King of the Ring winner challenged the WWE Champion Diesel to a match at SummerSlam. The contest itself wasn't great, but it was made even worse when King Mabel jumped onto Diesel. The force caused the champion to injure his lower back. Bro, he too way too big to be doing that, man. <laughs> And Diesel, or Kevin Nash, would later say he wasn't able to feel his leg. I broke my back. After laying on the mat for a while, the two men were able to get back on their feet and finish the match. Bro, he said that he couldn't feel his legs, man. Yo, this dude looks like he's at least 300 pounds. Come on, dude. I, I, I'm not surprised he couldn't feel his legs. According to Nash, after the show is over, WWE is ready to fire Mabel. However, despite being upset, Kevin Nash spoke up and prevented that from happening. Mm. In the midst of their love triangle storyline involving Stephanie McMahon, Triple H and Kurt Angle faced off in a triple threat match at SummerSlam, oh. which also included The Rock. The feud was so intense that the game and the Olympic gold medalists began brawling before the Great One had even made his entrance. Oh, yeah. The fight eventually made its way to the outside, where Triple H decided to hit Angle with a pedigree on the Spanish announcer's table. The table accidentally gave way oh. before the move was executed, and this caused Kurt to slam his head onto the floor. The Olympian ended up suffering a concussion and was taken to the back. Oh, Kurt Angle wow. did return later in the match and would later credit Stephanie McMahon and Triple H for helping him get through it. Ironically, this would involve Stephanie McMahon too. As part of the invasion storyline, oh. Rhino and Chris Jericho squared off after Spare. Rhino J insulted the quote 
owner of what? ECW, Stephanie. During their summer slam Fine match, gorillas? Rhino countered a top rope dive from Jericho with a gore. The impact caused Jericho's head to snap back uh. and collide with the arena floor. It doesn't seem like it was too serious, but the Ayatollah of Rock and Rolla did appear to be a bit dazed and mm. even botched a couple of moves. Oh, Luckily damn. Luckily for Y2J, he's able to lock in the walls of Jericho and pick up the win. Man, wrestling is no joke, bro. Um, This gives me a whole different perspective on um, WWE wrestlers and a newfound respect because some of those moves, yeah, you're bound to get injured doing those moves. I mean... If somebody botches a move or if somebody just doesn't jump as high or they a lot of that stuff has to be perfectly done or somebody is getting hurt. I don't even know how Stone Cold managed to get up after saying that he was partially paralyzed or temporarily paralyzed, get up and continue the match and win the match, which, you know, probably gave him the match after that point. But, you know, walked out with some help, of course. But if I broke my neck right then and there it's, it's a wrap it's done i'm walking out or i'm getting somebody to help me walk out because i'm not doing any more wrestling i'm done that really just shows how dedicated they are to this uh, organization so hats off to wrestlers and anybody who does wrestling man because that shit is not easy if you guys enjoyed my reaction make sure you hit the like button make sure you share and subscribe and i'll be back with some more reactions peace